Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we'll be talking about another great scholarship opportunity. It's also a full ride scholarship and we'll be discussing everything from eligibility to requirements to uh, the amount that they give you under the scholarship program. And we'll be tackling everything. So if it seems fit for you, go ahead and apply for the scholarship because the deadline is also approaching. And yeah, let's get into the video. So the very first thing is the name of scholarship. So it's called POSCO Asia Fellowship. It's given by the POSCO Group, which is one of the biggest steel corporations in the world. And it's again, like I said, it's a full ride scholarship. So we'll be discussing every other element of the scholarship. And uh, the first thing that we'll start with is eligibility and requirements. So that if this video does not concern you, you don't have to watch the whole thing. The first thing is the eligibility. So the first eligibility is that you must choose one of the nine universities that's given in the list. And if you can see in the image over here, there's a list of nine universities and you can only apply to these universities and get this scholarship. So the the combination of the scholarship and the admission in the particular university that you are interested in has to be among these nine universities. If you want this scholarship, you have to choose any one of these nine universities and you cannot apply to any other university in South Korea. So if the choice of your university is any other university out of these nine universities, sadly you cannot apply for this scholarship. The second eligibility criteria is that this scholarship is only for the masters and PhD students. So all the undergraduate students who want to apply for bachelors cannot apply under the scholarship program. Uh, you can apply for your master's, PhD or an integrated program of master's and PhD together. And the final eligibility criteria is that you must choose a STEM major. Now, what's a STEM major? STEM major is science, technology, uh, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. So that's STEM major. So you have to choose one of the majors among all these four fields and you cannot apply for any social science, humanities or any non-STEM majors. Now, if we talk about the requirements of the scholarship, there are two major requirements that you need to keep in mind. The first one is that you need to have an Asian citizenship. So you must belong to one of the Asian countries to apply for the scholarship. People who do not belong to the Asian continent cannot apply for the scholarship. And the second requirement is that um, the English proficiency. So you have to submit uh, English proficiency score. As you can see in the image, these are the requirements for a different type of test that there are. The best would be taking an IELTS or a TOEFL. That's the most easiest one to take in India. So you can take that and depending on the requirements, the requirements are not that much and you can apply for the scholarship. So it's a requirement. So you must have this. And the final requirement is the requirement of grades. So as you can see in the image over here, for different type of grade, uh, like the grading criteria, you have a minimum requirement of a grade. For example, on a 4.0 scale, you need to have a minimum of 2.7. On a 4.3 scale, you need to have a minimum minimum of 2.87 on a 4.5 scale you need a minimum of 3 and on a 100 scale you need a minimum of 82.9 so in India a lot of universities I know give uh, the results on a scale of 10 or different scales whichever scale you have try to convert it or just get the percentage conversion because if you have the percentage you can easily sum it on a scale of 100 so those were the three important requirements that you need to have and it's a must both eligibility and requirements are must so you need to qualify all the eligibility and and a requirements like I mentioned and if you are like if you are qualifying everything then you can go ahead and submit your application. The next thing we'll be talking about is the benefits that you get uh, from the scholarship. So under the scholarship like I said you can apply for a master's or a PhD or an integrated program of master's and PhD. So now if you're a master's student or if you're a PhD student tuition is covered for your entire education. For master's tuition is covered for the four semesters for PhD or integrated programs, the tuition is covered for six semesters. And then you get a stipend of 1 million Korean won for 22 months under the master's program and for 36 uh, months for the PhD or the integrated program. And apart from that, you also get the national health insurance, a settlement fee when you enter Korea, uh, online Korean class support where they'll be teaching you Korean, basic Korean for you to navigate in uh, the Korean society and fellowship community activity. One thing that you need to keep in mind is that this scholarship does not give you money or tickets to come to Korea. So that is something that has to be done on the students or the applicants part. Now, if we talk about applying for the scholarship, the application is pretty simple and very easy as compared to the GKS application where you have to prepare everything and you have to send via post. 
In this application, everything has to be done online. So I will post the link in the description box below. You visit the link and then you have to submit all the documents and you have to fill in all of your details and submit the application, like I said, online. Everything is online. You don't have to send uh, any documents through post. All the documents will also be submitted online through the online portal that they already have. The timeline is from May 1st to May 31st. It's best if you submit your application by May 30th because the timeline of 31st is not according to IST, right? It's according to UCT. So it might create a lot of confusion for uh, a lot of applicants. So it's best if you submit your application a day before uh, by May 30th. And uh, application is, like I said, it's already started. So you can uh, just go ahead and submit as soon as you can. And if we talk about the round rounds, like different type of rounds that you have in the scholarship, the first is obviously document screening. So once you submit your documents, they will screen all of your documents and all of your information, and then they will release a list of applicants who are eligible for the interview round around end of July. And um, once you are done with the interview, you'll get the interview results by, I think, um, end of August because they will be conducting the interview in the August first week and then you'll get the final results after the interview round by the end of August and then you can go ahead and submit that to your university and that we'll be talking about in the next section. One important thing that you need to keep in mind is that this scholarship is different from GKS in a way is that for POSCO scholarship, you apply for the scholarship separately and you apply to the university separately. So for example, when you apply to POSCO Asia Fellowship, in the application form, they will ask you to choose three universities. They can be any three from the nine universities that uh, it's listed. So you can choose any three depending on the three that suits your major or your interest and you can fill them in the POSCO Asia Fellowship application form. Now it's your personal duty to apply to all three universities because the scholarship application to POSCO and the uh, admission application to the three universities you have chosen, they work parallelly but independently. So the scholarship application will go on one side and at the same time you have to apply to each university depending depending on their uh, requirements, depending on their timeline. So that's your duty to stay parallel, but apply for both things separately. And once you have an acceptance from the university, and once you have an acceptance from the scholarship, both gets combined. So you get the funding from the POSCO, like the POSCO group, and you study in the universities, and the universities recognize their scholarship support. That is how it works. Because this scholarship is not coming from the government, it's coming from a private company. Both of the things work very separately. So, yeah, so that was it for this video. I really hope uh, you guys find this video super useful. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment box below and I'll reply as soon as I can. And if you like this video, give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until I see you again, bye-bye.